The two things that determine performance in any mobile device are the software and the hardware. Today, for operating systems, there are only three major players. But for mobile hardware, there's a lot of different chipsets that will limit how fast a device will run. This episode of Chip Wars is about one of the more popular Android chips, NVIDIA's Tegra. So what exactly is the Tegra chip, and what makes it so special? First, some background. Announced in 2008, NVIDIA's Tegra line of processors has gone from powering this and this to becoming Google's official reference platform for Android Honeycomb, powering all these mobile computing devices today. And in the future, we'll see new Tegra chips powering the on-screen displays of all 2013 Audis and these newly released Android devices. And it is at the heart of Google's Galaxy Nexus 7 tablet. The brand new Tegra 3, codenamed Cal-L while in development, is a system on a chip that integrates all the parts of a computer into a single chip for mobile devices. The CPU is based on the same basic ARM MP core used in iPhones, iPads, Samsung's Galaxies, Motorola Droids, and Amazon's Kindle Fire. But Nvidia is trying to take mobile devices further by recreating desktop-like performance on mobile devices by producing the first mass-market quad-core mobile chipset. The challenge when designing any mobile processor is, how do you boost performance while using even less energy than previous versions? In a CPU, most of the battery power is used switching transistors on and off billions of times per second during high-performance tasks, while in standby mode, some power is wasted in electrical leakage across gaps between the conductors. So NVIDIA needed to figure out a way to both increase clock speed for high performance and reduce the operating voltage while in standby mode. First, the four cores in the Tegra chips are based on a 40 nanometer fabrication process. Compared to existing Samsung and Amazon device processors, the Tegra lineup is a die shrink. Whenever you shrink the chip, you get less current leakage in standby mode, lowering power requirements. The high performance cores max out at about 1.6 gigahertz, drawing less power under heavy loads. But there's one problem. They end up using more power doing background tasks like checking email, receiving tweets, playing music or video, and GPS. The Tegra 3 addresses this problem by powering up a fifth core capped at 500 megahertz during standby mode, while the high-performance energy-intensive cores are power-gated and shut down. So in reality, the Tegra 3 has four plus one cores. This type of variable multiprocessing is managed by NVIDIA's own firmware. It can actively switch to one of four different states. A single core low power, single core high performance, dual core high performance, or quad core performance, switching the processors in under two milliseconds. The result is a lot less overall power consumption for everyday use, since the process processor dynamically changes the number of cores running based on what you're doing with the device. But there are differences among Tegra 3 chipsets. For example, the Google Nexus 7 has the base model Tegra 3, with all four CPUs clocking in at 1.15 GHz, 1.3 GHz for a single core, and a GPU clocked at 416 MHz, while the HTC One X has the mid-level Tegra 3 running at 1.4 GHz quad-core, 1.5 GHz single core, and a 520 MHz GPU, and the Transformer Patfinity 700 runs the high end at 1.6 quad core, 1.7 single core, and the same 520 megahertz GPU. But clock speed is only a part of the performance picture. Another feature of the Tegra 3 chipset is support for up to 128-bit advanced single instruction multiple data in its media processing engine that helps speed up video and audio processing. Each core has two 32 kilobyte chips of L1 cache, and all the cores share one megabyte of L2 cache. The GPU goes from 8 to 12 cores made up of 8 pixel shaders and 4 vertex shaders to help boost performance performance by a factor of 2 to 3. It can also output up to 2560 by 1600 resolution and supports 1080p. The memory bus is only single channel 32 bit wide and the memory controller supports low power DDR2 up to 1066 megahertz and DDR3 up to 1500 megahertz depending on which Tegra 3 chipset is used. For a bonus, Nvidia added expanded video game controller support for the PS3, Xbox 360 and the Wii. So overall the biggest feature of the Tegra 3 for most users is better power management, but for properly designed games, GPU improvements and a bump in CPU clock speeds will definitely improve performance. We really have to see how Android and its hardware and software developers use all these features, but I'm betting that since the Nexus 7 tablet comes with Jelly Bean pre-installed, any device with the Tegra 3 chipset will offer one of the best Android experiences. How will this chipset work with LTE? And how does it compare to other ARM-based processors? Subscribe and stay tuned to Chip Wars as we cover the Snapdragon S4, the Exynos 4 Quad, Maps 44.7 and Apple's A-Series processors. Thanks for watching.